So many announcements, so much to talk about, and I'm going to do it in three minutes. So a little bit of backstory. When Arvin came in, really the, the thought of the day or the leadership state said, we're going to lead in hybrid cloud and AI. And I totally got the cloud part because, quite frankly, the, the, I mean, the company had bought Red Hat, right? It makes total sense. They have a hybrid multi-cloud uh, stack that connects with the AWS's, the GCP's, dot, 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 dot. But I was always wondering about the AI. Like, was that a bolt-on? Like, I got quantum, right? But but AI was like, oh, are you talking about, like, the old Watson you brought out a decade ago? I, I, I don't get it. Well, this event was all about the AI part. It was really the coming out party for generative uh, AI and foundational models. Not that the company hadn't talked about it before uh, with foundational models, not, not that the company hadn't actually opened up an entire data center that was optimized uh, for, uh, for AI, but, but this is really what it was uh, all about. And if I step back, you know, some of the big messages for me was that they offer, IBM offers a full stack for AI uh, to clients, right? All the way from applica uh, the, the applications in the top, all the way through down to the actual silicon itself, and then everything in between, and then wrapped uh, around uh, services that can help clients if, if IBM wants to lead them to the water, uh, do that uh, as well. So. Uh, on the whole, you know some of the some of the more more important elements of their strategy, aside from you know obviously delivering real client value and their clients' clients is it's multi cloud, multi model, and open model, and those are the three uh, the three uh, characteristics. And um, I'm getting to the you know I still have to do a lot of work on really understanding why this needs to be hybrid uh, because there are companies like AWS who, who have the uh, the end to end. Now AWS is not putting outpost capabilities on prem yet, right? So I think you might argue that that, that that's that's not uh, possible. So company came out with uh, uh, Watson X, uh, which is foundational models for generative AI, has a studio, a data store, and a governance uh, toolkit. Uh, Watson Infusion uh, came in uh, as well uh, for uh, code, uh, AI ops, digital labor, security, and sustainability. These are the key uh, access area. A, a partnership with Hugging Face. Who isn't partnering with Hugging Face? I think everybody's Hugging Face. Hugging Face. What a dumb name. <laughs> <laughs> Although, no, I just you, say that. You can't forget it. Yeah, I, I, I had a group chat, Pat, somewhere along the lines where someone said that to me too. I was like in a chat and they're like, you know, so-and-so yeah. wants an introduction to so-so at Hugging Face. And then the next person was like, God, what a dumb name. Like, <laughs> but but at the same time, like maybe that's it. Like you can't and forget it. Maybe Brandon, Brandon, you and I are too old to appreciate this. Can, can you imagine? Maybe that's a something in your 20s or a something in your 30s. I mean, I get what it is. Hugging Face, emoji, yada, yada. But, but anyways, yeah. I think it's a dumb name. Um, so back to IBM thing. So in the future, here's what I'm going to be looking. Here's what I'm going to be analyzing with this. First of all, uh, speed. Okay, I, I would say that uh, on the whole, uh, IBM doesn't stand for for speed. It's it's about safety and trust. And can IBM uh, amp up uh, the speed of this? Hey, Bill. Uh, to uh, to move forward because that is important, but but I do think that that IBM won't cross the line on on trust. We did hear uh, the parallelization between research and products when we were talking to uh, Dario and uh, Green. Green. Yep, I thought that was interesting. The second thing I'm going to be looking for is how does that actually operate with the data layer, right? You have Watson XAI data, and you know my my question is is are they i never saw one aws gcp or azure logo that actually showed that this solution was multi-cloud i know i heard the word multi-cloud but i just haven't seen 
uh, that that yet. In the past, IBM has a little bit been a little bit afraid to show any of those logos in the past, and then I saw that saw them starting to be infused in. I didn't see a single um, one of those multi cloud logos at the show, aside from obviously sponsorships, but not in in slideware that made it just absolutely simple. That, that this company is supporting multi-cloud. But, but again, a lot of research to do, good time. We spent three and a half days there. Good show. Yeah, it was a big moment, Pat, for IBM. I've been writing endlessly about the uh, kind of convergence of enterprise AI. And over the last two years, I think there's been a lot of interest in AI in general, Pat, and generative AI has actually been something that we've been experiencing for some time. I don't think a lot of people realize that, but when you know uh, Google's finishing your sentences in Google Workspace, that is a version of generative AI. The ability for you know multi-term conversation that we've been having with uh, with Amazon with our devices, it's still in its early days, but we've been seeing large language models being deployed. Whether you know it's Jarvis from um, uh nvidia you know that model that they 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 developed some time ago but the truth is is that a lot of the real value of generative ai is unlocked in enterprise data the enterprise data that we hold that's in our systems of record that's in crm erp and our hcm solutions within our supply chains ambient data that exists within our ecosystems it's video data it's customer interaction data cx data Companies want to build workflows, and with this onset of generative AI that's taken place in the last six months, companies want to build sophisticated, proprietary generative AI capabilities where they can add value to products and services that they're bringing to market, as well as deliver better customer uh, and employee experiences within their organizations. IBM is basically standing up and saying, we want to be to enterprise AI what ChatGPT or Google Bard or... Um, you know, any of these sort of large language models, Facebook uh, Llama has been to consumer AI. And I say consumer, I just mean user interactions with the open internet, okay? That's what basically has popularized generative AI. It's the user interaction with search. It's the user interaction uh, with a chat bot that feels very human or a little human, depending on which one you're working with, and more real. Well, the, the, the bottom line is this, is that companies have to have the data to train, they have to have the system and fabric to build this on, they have to have the applications to deploy this, and they need some consulting in order to actually figure out how to build these workflows out. You know, it's not as easy as, I know we've heard things about like um, speech to code, um, you know, and and yes, this is happening. The, the, the role of the developer in the future is gonna change. The role of the data scientist in the future is gonna change because these are models that have the capability to be continually reinforced, learned. Um, and with a company like IBM offering their foundation models, which is basically validated models for different kinds of things, digital labor, uh, IT observability, they have the, the potential to basically say, you can plug right into this and then put your data, put a layer of your own proprietary data on top of this, a much smaller subset of data. It can cost millions of dollars to train a large language model. So you could take a data set that might be 10% of the size of the of a traditional data set required to trade a large language model, and then you can deploy it on IBM Watson X, and you could therefore uh, implement into your business meaningful generative and AI capabilities uh, on a much lower cost with the architectural support of a hybrid fabric that is Red Hat, and then you can take that all the way to utilization. So that's my my both uh, assessment and question mark. The assessment is IBM offered the toolbox. It's literally the toolbox, it's the actual data layer and fabric, and then it's interestingly, Pat, you didn't mention this much, but the governance. And the governance is really an important thing because we're deploying this so fast. We went from zero to a million in six months, and we actually don't have very good policy frameworks and regulation around how we're going to allow this to continue to proliferate into society. Um, so that's super interesting. Um, the Watson governance is gonna come later this year. This is not like an entire framework for all governing of AI, but it's kind of within the work you're gonna do with Watson X. It's, hey, how do we make sure our model doesn't, doesn't drift and change and become something we don't want it to be as new data is introduced to it? 
governance is going to be able to help with that. So lots of lots going on, Pat. And I think you hit the big, this is the home run comment you made. And, you know, I don't like agreeing with you because I want everyone to think I'm smarter. But in all serious, it's speed. You, know, you still do. It's speed. Speed is the question mark I think we both have. We were in many executive meetings, one-on-ones, conversations with the, and I kind of just kept saying, how fast can you get traction? The hyperscale cloud providers are, are the biggest threat. You know, and while IBM certainly has partnerships with all of them, the, the, you can absolutely be certain that Microsoft is not gonna limit its stuff to consumer or search. You know they're already embedding it into plenty of applications. They're going to make it um, open AI trainable. Uh, you can train right on top of it with your own data. How does this versus maybe using like a foundation model plus your own smaller data set, wh which one develops and, and delivers better outcomes? The other thing is you're going to see tons of stacking. And with AutoGPT, you're going to see models stacked. So you're going to use Watson plus open plus uh, Bard plus Llama plus because you're going to take the best, just like we've seen with CloudPad and just like we've seen like you're going to take the best of all these different models and you're going to start gluing them together and you're going to start inferencing against more and more and more, which is going to drive tons of compute, tons of interest and tons of excitement. So listen, I'm stoked. Let's go Gen AI. Pat, in two weeks, three weeks, three years, maybe you and I can be having the Pat Dan show while we're still in bed, getting some sleep, some rest, sitting by the poolside. That's what I'm hoping for because, boy, we are moving quick. It would be great. Based on uh, some technologies that we're going to talk about Google a little bit later, uh, there would be a sign that says uh, machine generated. And I wonder if that's what people want or do they want the real Pat and Dan? We will see because I'm looking forward to uh, trying out these technologies. Hey, Pat. Uh, yes. Oh, no, I was saying we should talk more about generative AI on this show. I know. I know. We, we, we really should. Hey, uh, one thing I wanted to sneak in here, I mean, it was all about AI at, at IBM Think, but they did bring out a pretty incredible set of uh, quantum safe uh, tech technologies. Uh, you may or may not be aware, but there are bad actors who are harvesting data now uh, to be used in the future when they can apply uh, cr uh, crypto breaking technology to get, get, get at that data. And IBM brought out a full array of quantum safe technologies, uh, quantum safe explorer uh, that looks at source code and object code, quantum safe advisor that's essentially a view of cryptographic inventory, quantum safe remediator. Uh, and this is, by the way, is to add to uh, their quantum uh, service uh, that, that, that they have that uh, leverages uh, quantum safe uh, cryptography that. IBM customers can use today. And, you know, I'm not pumping this just because I was in the press release or anything, but um, you can also read a lot about it on Paul Smith Goodson's Forbes article.